Hey, what's up YouTube? Ronis with it and tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be doing skin retouching and color grading for this outdoor portrait I took a while back and I used a one light setup for this very image and was taken using a Canon 6D camera and uh, this is my camera raw interface so the settings I used uh, I shot this image at f4 at 1 out of 800th of a second and using an 85mm at ISO 100 it was around midday, I, I guess. Yeah, it was around midday or around 1 p.m. So I used high speed sync. You can see like right in the sky, it was still kind of bright. So usually when I'm going to do uh, editing for my images, I first of all note that I know the camera profile or the picture profile I shot in in my camera. So for this case, you just come right to the profile and look for uh, your camera profile you have landscape portrait standard depending on the profiles your camera can support or the camera you shot in basically so i shot this image in landscape so i'm just going to come and select landscape so usually this is more like my very first step to color grading all my images and when you click that you're going to get the image looking right the way you are looking at it on the back of your screen when you're shooting it so right now after doing so you can see uh, where we started and where we are with just a simple click onto the landscape option so usually uh, the Canon cameras always have this kind of tint or some magentas so I'm basically going to move this tint or remove it by moving this slider towards the green so the opposite of magenta is green that's why i was moving the slider towards the green side then i'm going to come and start doing the adjustments or the basic adjustments to this very image so first of all i want to regain the highlights in the dress and maybe this jewelry uh, in the neck area so i'm going to come the highlights and pull it all the way down uh, to regain back these details then i'm also going to move my whites uh, down to around negative 37 and also move my blacks uh, slightly down to around uh, 11 then after doing so I'm going to add some little bit of contrast to around 3 and also my shadows a little bit up so after doing so you're going to notice that the image is going to uh, turn out to look oversaturated so I want to deal with this uh, saturation in this image I'm basically going to come and turn out turn down the vibrance to around negative 4 plus the saturation of this image to around negative 4 to kind of compensate uh, for the saturated image. Yeah, I'm also going to increase on the clarity like that to add some kind of details into the darks or the blacks of the image. So since this image kind of looks uh, underexposed, I'm going to come to the exposure and I'm going to move it up so that it can slightly or match uh, the initial image you can see that uh, the image is now detailed and the skin tones are existing in this kind of image so after doing so I'm just going to hit open uh, to open this image into my Photoshop interface and it's going to take a short while to load and after that we are going to get into the retouching of this very uh, portrait you can see the image is really looking beautiful and amazing i'm going to start by cleaning up this image i know you're going to be doing less of the cleaning because the model really has a beautiful and nice skin so you're going to be doing less of the blemish removal it is going to take just a few seconds so start by duplicating the background there so that you can always have a backup for your blemish removal by hitting ctrl or command j on the keyboard and i'm going to use my spot healing brush tool so i'm not going to select sample all layers because this is in a field layer basically it is more of a copy of the background layer. it is going to be as if i'm working from the background layer so i'm going to zoom in by hitting ctrl or command plus and reduce on the size of my spot heal healing brush tool by using the brackets right on the P after a P key on the keyboard and just simply click over those tiny blemishes or skin imperfections 
in the image to get rid of them and when i'm done doing so you're going to be uh, doing some little bit of skin retouching uh dodging and burning and eye and teeth whitening for uh, this very image or for this very model so i think we are done cleaning up the image so after that i'm going to create another layer on top of layer one right, right here by hitting ctrl or command j and i'm going to name this layer uh, low frequency and i'm going to name this layer high frequency so basically we're going to be learning about uh, frequency separation what is frequency separation uh, frequency separation is basically a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two. I uh, divides this image into uh, the textures and the colors or the skin tones. So for this case, uh, the low layer is going to be containing our skin tones since skin tones or colors are usually embedded beneath the textures and the high frequency is going to be containing the textures in this very image. So basically I'm going to select my low frequency layer and hide the visibility of the high frequency layer by clicking on the eye icon on the left hand side of the layer and come to filter come to blind come to gaussian blur so what you have to do uh, you have to zoom in until you look for that area that seems to have more of the skin textures than the rest of the image and for this case i'm going to go with around the nose area so i basically going to start move i'm basically going to start moving this uh radius so you shouldn't also cram these figures depending on your images you should uh, move this radius until you start losing out on the skin details in your images so for this case we are going to start moving until we have completely or we can no longer or visibly see uh, the skin details in the image so i think at around a radius of seven is fine for this portrait and i'm just going to simply hit ok and when you hit ok you're going to notice that the image has turned out to look blurry but you shouldn't uh, worry at all because you're going to be recovering the image by simply selecting the high frequency layer and activating it so when we are on the low frequency layer we basically try to hide our skin textures from that layer and we put them somewhere so we want to steal them from this low frequency layer and before we can steal them you have to notice that this is a 16 a bit image i hope you guys can notice that or see this it is a 16 bit image so if at all you have a 16 bit image and an 8 bit image uh, your settings are going to be deferring you shouldn't use the same frequency separation values for an 8-bit image uh, when you're retouching a 16-bit image so the values should differ depending on the bit ratio or the bit size of your image so after selecting your high frequency layer basically you're going to come to image and come to apply image so when you come to apply image uh, if at all you have an 8-bit image like i have just shown you right here uh, these are the settings you're going to be using for an 8-bit image frequency separation you're going to basically going to come and now select the low frequency layer and come to the blending mode Be since you are uh, stealing the textures from the low frequency layer come to the blending and select subtract make sure the opacity is 100 the scale is 2 and offset 128 make sure invert is not checked or marked and always make sure that your preview is on and when it is on you're going to notice that your textures are going to be on this gray kind of layer and it is going to be lacking the colors but for this case we have a 16-bit image so right now i'm going to start uh, mentioning the settings for a 16-bit image so if at all it is a 16-bit image always make sure the blending mode is add and opacity is 100 the scale is 2 and offset uh, at 0 and after doing that come and check or click on this invert option and make sure your preview is on and you have the same values uh, your textures are going to be on this 50% gray kind of layer and now click ok so as you can notice that the image has turned out to look 
way more or actually worse and we can't get the colors so in order to get back the colors you're going to simply come to the blending mode and change it from normal and look for linear light and you get back the image looking the way it was meant to be so we're going to select both layers and hit ctrl or command g on the keyboard to put these two in a group and we're going to name that group frequency separation so after we have named that group you can turn this on and off to see if at all there is a difference between the original background image and your frequency separation group so if at all there is no difference at all there is going to be the best out of uh, your skin retouching basically we are going to open the frequency separation group and select the high frequency layer then come under the adjustments and create a black and white adjustment layer so the reason for creating this black and white adjustment layer is because we want a whole player that is going to be showing us the uh, imperfect skin tones and we are going to start blending those skin tones remember skin retouching is more about blending or even evening out the skin tones in a given image so you're going to come to the red channel and they're going to darken the image uh, in order to see the uneven skin tone transitions in this image you're going to close this by clicking right there so for whichever tool you're using always make sure that your caps your caps lock is not on so when it is on it is going to turn your tool into this uh, cross like icon so you shouldn't always leave the caps key enabled so turn it off always so since you are going to be dealing with skin tones you are going to select the low frequency layer and now we want to get a tool that is going to help us even out or blend the skin tones in this image so that tool is called a mixer brush tool so the mixer brush tool is always under the brushes so you can right click and uh, get your brush or your mixer brush tool so this is not a brush it is a, a mixer brush tool and if at all you don't have it right here for older versions it is usually under this uh, tool bar or this option so we want to set up the brush so that it can give us an more natural re results when you are trying to blend or even out the skin tones so come and select clean brush because we want the brush to uh, be clean and we shouldn't want any color on the brush so we just want it totally clean so we have two options right here we have the first option is loading the brush after each and every stroke and the second is cleaning the brush after each and every stroke so we are going to be using the second option so select this and when you select this it is going to be like in this uh, gray kind of square when it is selected so we're going to be using a wetness of around nine percent because we don't want a high wetness since it is going to be uh, making the image look like a painting or a plastic image you just want to use a low wetness and load is 75 mix is 90 and the flow 100 make sure sample all layers is not checked or marked because we are only working on the low frequency layer i wouldn't want to sample textures from this gray layer so after doing so make sure you're on your low frequency layer and you're going to start evening out the skin tones and when you're evening out don't uh, don't even out the skin tones when you're zoomed into that ratio or that size make sure you leave it at i think right here it is fine so start blending and when you're blending make sure you blend the mid-tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone because you don't want to distort the original shape of uh, the model's face or the subject uh, we are trying to uh, do the skin retouching on so just blend and harmonize just like that i hope you're seeing this but uh, as you're trying to do the blending make sure you're doing the blending when you're selected on uh, the low frequency layer and just continue harmonizing or evening out the skin tones and if at all you want to check on the progress of your uh, blending i'm going to show you what you have to do after just blending right here on the cheek area of uh, the model so you can see i'm blending these mid-tones alone 
we have a shadow right here. I'm just going to blend it. So if at all you want to check on your progress, turn off the black and white layer. And you can now turn the frequency pressure layer group on and off to see what you have done. And I hope you guys can visibly see uh, the changes we have made to this image. So come and turn back the black and white layer. And make sure you're still on the low frequency layer. So you can increase on the size of the mixer brush by using the brackets are right next to the P key on the keyboard. So the left bracket is going to reduce on the size and uh, the right bracket is going to increase on the size of uh, the mixer brush tool. So I'm basically trying to even out the skin tones. I'm blending the shadows right and the left of the nose bridge alone. So I'm going to come to the highlight of the nose. I'm just going to blend that too like that. I hope you guys are visibly seeing uh, how far we are taking this image. Then come right to the chin and just harmonize that. So you're going to stay tuned because I'm going to be color grading this image. So that you can have the best out of uh, the skin tones uh, from this very retouched image. So you have to keep around and you shouldn't uh, retain from this uh, tutorial. So zoom in if at all you're going to even out the skin tones on a smaller area because uh, the mixer brush tool is going to help us uh, blend or even out uh, the skin tones on a smaller scale if at all you really want to uh, harmonize or blend the tones on a particular tiny area. So come the neck area and just also blend or even out uh, the skin tones like that. So I would recommend that you guys should uh, use the mixer brush tool on the neck and the hands. And for a second method that I'm going to be sharing in this tutorial, uh, we're going to be only working or using that method only on the face of our subject or on the face of the model. So we're going to start a blending the hands of the model. Remember this is a skin retouching tutorial and wouldn't want to eliminate or leave out uh, the hands of the model. So just come and blend like that. So you're basically trying to even out uh, the skin tones on the hands so that we have nice uh, smooth skin tone transitions on uh, the hands and the way I'm doing this I'm trying to blend or even out the mid tones alone, the shadows alone and the highlights alone because I'm, I'm not just trying to uh, move my brush from one color or one shade to another. I'm basically trying to even out a particular sh shade at a time because I don't want to distort the original shape or dimension of the model's uh, skin or body parts. So I'm going to uh, hold down the space bar key and click to move to a different area. Or you can as well use this side to move uh, to a given area that you want to uh, retouch. So I think we are done blending or evening out the hands. So turn off the black and white or our help layer and see the before after, before after. You can visibly see the progress for this image. So select the black and white and I delete it because right now we no longer need the black and white layer and come back and select your low frequency layer and get your lasso tool. Feathering is 22 pixels and alias is selected and you can now zoom into your image all the way. And when you zoom in, come and make a selection on the face. So you should resist from selecting close to maybe the accessories on the face or maybe the eyebrows and maybe the hair and edges. Only select the skin. So come to filter and come to blur and come to gush and blur. So we're going to move this until we find a place where the skin texture is really even enough and it is really natural. So you have to zoom out while doing this so that even when a person looks at the image from a distance, they are going to be able to look at, at the natural skin textures in the image. So come and hit OK. And now we're going to apply the effect 
onto the rest of the image by selecting so you have to hold down the key on the mouse and now make a sample right click and click on Gaussian blur so we basically want to apply the effect onto the rest of the image and when you apply the effect you can now reduce on it by hitting shift ctrl f or shift command f to reduce on the effect on a particular area so just want to apply it onto uh, the face to uh, blend the transitions even more for the areas we, we may have missed out when we are trying to use a mixer brush tool to even out the skin tones uh, of this model so come right this side towards uh, this other side and draw the shape according to the way light is falling on a particular area and right click and hit Gaussian blur so you're basically trying to even out the skin tones using the a lasso tool method and I know some people prefer to use this as an independent option of uh, frequency separation but I prefer uh, using both because uh, when you combine uh, both uh, you get a really powerful image or results out of your retouching so you can see the before after before after I think we are done uh, retouching this image so right now we want to do the eye whitening and before we can do the eye whitening first of all we want to uh, do or to add shape or dimension to this image remember when you're doing skin retouching sometimes it tends to flatten your image so we want to uh, add some little bit of shape or dimension to this image so we're going to come to the curves adjustment layer so come to curves and now come to select and come to color range so for this case we only want to enhance uh, these highlights right here so when you select color range make sure your quick mask option is activated and selection is also se marked or checked and now select the highlight and you can increase or decrease on the fuzziness to get a nicer selection so for whichever area you select is either going to be kind of yellow or green in color and now if at all it is a highlight so hit ok and for this case i'm only going to dodge this image to add some bit of highlights to the image i hope just move it slightly up and i think uh, that looks okay i'm going to close this you can see the before after before after we have just added shape or dimension to this very image so right now i would love to start are doing the eye and teeth whitening before we can do some little bit more of color grading in camera row so we're going to create another stamp visible layer by hitting shift alternate command e on the keyboard or shift alternate control e on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer and you're going to basically duplicate it by hitting control or command j on the keyboard then you're going to come to filter and you're going to come to camera row filter and you're going to start uh, doing the eyes and teeth whitening. Remember, this is a powerful tool that is going to transform your images. So uh, we, we are going to zoom into the eyes by hitting the zoom tool. Or you can simply use Ctrl or Command Plus and come to the adjustment brush tool. So since we have some yellow color in the eye area, we have to come and set the adjustment brush. So this is the adjustment brush. So when you're setting it, you're going to move towards the opposite of yellow and you're going to go with around negative 29 then move the tint since we want to eliminate some greens in the eyes to around 61 and since we want the eyes to pop just move the highlights to 4 and plus the whites and now we're going to leave the rest at 0 as you can see now since we have the color or colors in the white area of the eye move the saturation slider towards uh negative 66 and now start painting over the white area you only have to paint over only and only what you feel should be a uh, white in uh, the white area of the eye basically so hold down the space bar and move to a different area that you want to whiten and also start painting over the white area you can even enhance that catch light 
to make the eyes pop you can now zoom out and get your zoom tool and you can now simply uh, zoom into the image hold down the space bar and move towards the teeth to do some teeth whitening so hold down the space bar to move so when you're doing teeth whitening make sure you uh, paint over each individual tooth at a time to do out whiten the teeth basically so just do this and because when you paint over the gum it is going to desaturate the gum and you don't want uh, desaturated gums anyway so just paint over only what you feel should be white uh, in the teeth so just come and paint over like that I hope you guys are learning and getting tips and taking notes uh, from these uh, numerous tutorials that I keep on uh, dropping or uploading on uh, this channel so hold down the space back key and click to move to another area so basically I'm doing the teeth whitening by painting each individual tooth at a time I know some people are really not patient with this step and they prefer to uh, just move the brush from one side to another and it's going to be giving you guys unnatural or results that are not nice at all and it is going to be seen by a person that is going to be looking at your images when you do post them so uh, we, I think we are done whitening the teeth and you can see the difference we are now have in this image then after we have done so you're going to come back to these adjustments and you're going to do some little bit more of adjustments right here um, we are going to move the reds to around neg negative 4 and also the saturation of the green primary to around negative 5 then we are going to come to the HSL panel and we are going to come to the hues and we are going to come to the oranges and we are going to move these oranges towards uh, the yellows I should say and when you are done doing that you are going to hit OK and I think we are done doing the eye and teeth whitening and some color grading to this image you can see the before after before after so we are going to come to the selective color option and you are going to come to or under the blacks and we're going to just increase on the blacks to around five in this image and we're going to move the yellows to around a uh, negative 10 to have this image uh, having that kind of pop or to add some little bit of pop uh, to this very image and I think we are done doing the retouching and color grading to this very image so you can see we started right here and here we are and you can see that the image is looking uh, nice and beautiful and has that kind of pop added onto it so right now i want to show you guys the best way to export your images in photoshop and the best way to export is you have to come to file because you don't want your image to change color when you post it or share it on another device so you simply have to come to file then come to export and come to export as so when you come to export as this is where I usually get my images to have those nice and rich tones and having a very sharp image when I post it on Instagram or I use another device to view my images. So it is going to load this preview and under a preview you have the format of course JPEG is the most supported format and come and select the resampling if at all you want your image to be exported as a sharp image come and select by cubic sharper and when you want to embed all the colors that you have been wanting or that you have added to your image during retouching come and select embed color profile and also convert to srgb and when you're done doing that hit export so you're going to hit export and when you hit export it's going to open or bring up a window that is going to show the location where you want your image to be saved so we're going to just hit export and now when it is done loading this preview you're going to be able to export your image and it's not going to be able to uh, change any color so when you hit that 
it's going to bring the folder where you want to save your image and uh, you can as well maybe name rename your image like tutorial and just hit save and your image is going to be saved in the location you selected so basically this has been a retouching tutorial about um, how I retouch my outdoor images and how I retouched this very image and color graded it. We also did color grading and eye and teeth whitening and also did dodging and burning and later on saved this image in Photoshop. And if at all you like this tutorial, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. If at all you are watching from this channel for the very first time, I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more tutorials on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.